Uh, good afternoon, Agent Zapata. Good afternoon. We've gone through a pretty long list of things that you did analysis on. Um, did you do any analysis on any clothing or, or anything from the victim's bodies other than Maggie Murdaugh's fingernail clippings? I analyzed um, Margaret Murdaugh's fingernail clippings, Paul Murdaugh's fingernail clippings, as well as the swaps. <clears throat> and when you say they're buckle swaps, that was simply to collect their DNA to perform analysis, is that correct? That was the known standard that I used to make comparisons, yes. After, uh, Maggie Murdaugh's left finger uh, nail clippings, did you, you found uh, unidentified male DNA? Um, foreign to Margaret Murdaugh, there um, were some alleles present, yes. Well, we say some alleles present. Was there DNA from an unrelated male under her fingernails? For items, one of the alleles um, indicates a male um, contributor. And this was an unrelated male? For do you mean unrelated as in unrelated? Well, like let, let me strike that and rephrase. Uh, were Paul and Alec Murdoch excluded as contributors? Yes. So male DNA under her fingernails, not from Paul, not from the Alec Murdoch. The foreign DNA to her, yes, they were excluded as contributors. Would it have been possible to perform any further analysis on this, a Y chromosome profile? It is possible, but because there were so many male um, individuals who were related um, to each other as standards that were submitted. Um, um, it was decided that that would not be um, the best course of action to continue analysis because um, the male, um, the Y chromosome testing that you're discussing is inherited um, along the males of a familial line. And so there'll be no way to distinguish between um, any related people, any related males. Um, when I guess making this determination, were you all aware, as we had the previous testimony that Maggie Murdoch had been to a nail salon late that afternoon? I did not have any information about that, no. So if her nails were quite clean coming to Gazelle, she doesn't have a lot of opportunity to have contact with Objection unrelated males. I overrule the objection. So if her nails were clean coming to Moselle, it doesn't appear that she has much opportunity to have that kind of contact with unrelated males, does it? It could be DNA, you know, DNA under fingernails, you're picking up DNA anytime you touch an item, potentially. Um, if she did get her nails done, it's possible that somewhere at the nail salon, there was DNA that she picked up under her fingernails. We can't really tell you how or when the DNA got there, but at any point in time between getting her nails done and arriving home, she could touch an object and potentially DNA from the object could be under her fingernails, or she can touch an individual and their DNA be under her fingernails in that way. Are you familiar with something called CODIS? Yes. And what is CODIS? CODIS is um, a database that we use to enter um, uh, 
unknown profiles from a crime. To attempt to identify um, links between uh, different cases and also between individuals who maybe have been arrested or convicted of a crime. So it's a database that you can submit DNA samples to and see if you get a hit and can identify whose DNA it is. Correct. Um, was this unidentified unknown male DNA found under Maggie Murdoch's fingernails submitted to CODIS? It was not because, like we explained earlier, there were only three alleles present that were foreign to her, and that does not meet the threshold of uh, information necessary to enter a profile into CODIS. And it was decided not to do this further Y chromosome uh, analysis on it. Correct. Is it unusual? in your experience to not test the victim's clothing? For DNA, wouldn't their hands always be a area of interest? Again, it depends. If there is evidence of a struggle, then perhaps, which is why we would take the fingernail clippings. Um, if we don't know, then sometimes you take the fingernail clippings just to see if we can get some DNA from the fingernail clippings. But... Yeah. And the one time, and that the one time something was taken from them, it revealed unknown, unidentifiable male DNA. A very partial, low-level profile. Foreign to Margaret. And you found a. Maggie Murdoch's DNA on the uh, 300 blackout. Shell casings that were recovered, is that correct? Are you referring to item 7.1? Yes. She was included as a contributor to that item, yes. And your report doesn't separate between individual shell casings, does it? No. Uh, and is your report consistent with one of those shell casings being found in physical contact with her body? I believe there was information from the crime scene that um, one of the shell casings was um, recovered from underneath her body. And is your report consistent with that, that DNA could be uh, transferred by physical contact? That's possible, yes. And for the, uh, the shot shells um, found um, in the feed room, that had a presumptive uh, blood test positive. Uh, you found Paul's DNA on those, is that correct? Um, Paul was included as a contributor to that item, yes, 10.1. And is that consistent with those being found in a room soaked with his blood? It would not be unexpected. And for the, the steering wheel of the Chevy Suburban, there was a positive human blood test and I believe you found Maggie and Alex Murdoch's DNA on the steering wheel. For item 56? Yes. For item 56, um, which was a mixture, was interpreted as a mixture originating from two individuals, um, both Margaret and Richard Alexander Murdoch were included as contributors. So, yes. They were included yeah. as contributors. Yes. And is that consistent with someone who has handled um, uh, Margaret uh, Murdaugh's deceased body, which is unfortunately covered in blood, and then driving the vehicle? I can't ever tell you exactly how the DNA was deposited onto an item. I can just tell you what the DNA profile uh, and is. And I'm not asking you to, I'm just asking, is, is it consistent? Is there anything in your report that would exclude that explanation? It's a possibility. And for the two shotguns, neither one of those had Paul's DNA, is that correct? Can you give me an item I, number, I please? I can, sorry, just a sec.
The first one is item 15. Item 15 were swabs from the Camo Benelli 12 gauge shotgun from receiver forward of the loading port. And Paul Murda was excluded as a contributor to that item. And the other shotgun was item 22. For 22.4 which was interpreted as a mixture originating from two individuals. Paul Murdaugh was excluded as a contributor. For item 22.5, um, due to the relatedness of the contributors, I was not able to offer a conclusion regarding Paul Murdaugh. So that's a situation that we talked about earlier where sometimes if there's a small amount of DNA present, we cannot distinguish between related individuals. And so I was not able to make any comparisons to Paul to that item. But you're not able to say for either one of those shotguns that Paul's DNA was detected. He was excluded as a contributor for 22.4. For 22.5, I couldn't make any comparisons to him either way. And again, is there anything in your test results that would be inconsistent with somebody who, with Alec Murdoch, having uh, Maggie Murdoch's blood on his hands, having just visited the crime scene and handling those two weapons? Again, I can't really say exactly how the DNA um, was deposited onto an item. And then later you did some uh, DNA testing on the white t-shirt he was wearing, correct? Yes. Um, did anyone ever tell you why you were being asked to perform those tests? Which tests do you mean? On the, his white t-shirt. The DNA analysis on the t-shirt? So the DNA one. DNA. It was submitted with a request to um, for DNA um, for blood. And so when items come in with a request for DNA blood, we will um, test it. Um, if it is presumptive positive, then we'll move forward with DNA analysis on that item. So did anyone say we believe he's wearing this shirt that night? Is that why you're testing it for blood? Just to see if that, right? Someone's asking you to do this work. Did anyone say, we think he was wearing this shirt that night during these murders, let's test it for DNA and for blood? I know that the shirt was removed from his body when it was collected. Mm -hmm. As far as when he was wearing the shirt, I don't have any information about that. Let me pull up what's been previously admitted as the uh, Defense Exhibit 32. Okay. You recognize this, correct? Yes. And this shows this shows where the, the cuttings were, were made from the shirt, right? The A, B, C, D, E. Yes. Okay. And just kind of going through very quickly, cutting A down here in the bottom, did you find uh, Maggie or Paul's DNA in cutting A? Cutting A... Is item 19.4? Yes. For 
For 19.4, Margaret Murdaugh was excluded as a contributor and um, Paul Murdaugh was, Paul, Paul Murdaugh was included as a contributor. So we have Paul and A. In B, did you find Maggie or Paul? For item 19.5, Paul was excluded as a contributor, um, and Margaret Murdaugh was included as a contributor. And for C, which is going up a bit, so now we're off the bottom of the shirt, did you find Maggie or Paul? For item 19.6, um, again, I was not able to make any comparisons to Paul um, due to the relatedness of the contributors. But Margaret was included as a contributor to that mixture. Okay. For cutting D, now we're up at the right shoulder. Did you find uh, Maggie or Paul there? For item 19.7, I could not make any comparisons to Paul due to the relatedness of the contributors. And Margaret was included as a contributor to the mixture. Did you also find Nolan Tootin in D? He was also included as a contributor to the mixture. Going over to the other shoulder, did you find Maggie or Paul in E? For 19.8, um, Paul Murdaugh was excluded as a contributor. And Margaret Murdaugh was included as a contributor to the mixture. Okay. So. No Paul, but Maggie there. Now coming down all the way to the bottom, G. Did you find Maggie or Paul there? Um, Paul was excluded as a contributor to the mixture. Now finally for both F and H up here, did um, you get any results for either one of those? For 19.10, Margaret was also included as a contributor. Sorry, just to finish that result. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, you were asking about? F and H, did you get any results for either one of those? Um, for F, which was our item 19.9, um, a DNA profile was developed, but due to the inability to determine the number of contributors, no further interpretation will be offered. For H, which is our item 19.11, Paul was excluded as a contributor. And for Margaret, um, the comparison to Margaret, an uninformative statistical result was obtained. No conclusion can be made regarding Margaret Murdaugh as a possible contributor to the mixture under the list of propositions, um, which in this case, the propositions were um, Richard Alexander Murdaugh and Margaret Murdaugh contributed to the mixture versus Richard Alexander Murdaugh and an unidentified, unrelated individual contributed to the mixture. And that's a situation I described earlier where the seesaw is balanced, so it can't tell me in either direction which scenario is a better explanation of the DNA profile. So the only part of the, the shirt that we see right here at the front where you can say that you did find Paul's DNA is down here at A, the bottom right part of the shirt, correct? Don't, don't see. For item A, I did have an inclusionary likelihood ratio for Paul. For several of the other stains, there was, um, I could not distinguish between him and other related individuals, so I could not make comparisons to him. But the only place you did, definitely did find Paul was A, is that correct? On the front of the shirt.
that was the only item where there was an inclusionary likelihood ratio for Paul. Do you remember when you did this, when you reported these DNA results? Do you know the date? Are you asking specifically for yeah, the, the date that you reported your, your results for the shirt, for DNA? For the shirt. Um, there were two reports that um, had the shirt because there were two times that it was processed originally. Um, the first report, which had the results for item 19.2. Was June twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, and then the second report um, was originally issued July twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. July twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. On July 26th, the day after, did you attend a meeting uh, with um, President was, uh, Major Huey? I apologize if I'm not saying the names correctly. Captain uh, Riley, Captain Reinhardt, Lieutenant Wallace, Lieutenant Shank, Lieutenant Hash, yourself, and uh, Mindy Worley. Did you attend that meeting? Yes, I did. And uh, was the purpose of that meeting to discuss the DNA report? Yes, it was to explain the results of my report. Um, were you at that meeting asked to perform hematry? Tests? Not at that meeting, no. Okay. When were you asked to perform hematry tests on the shirt? August 10th, 2021. And is that the day that you performed them? Yes. Yeah, I think you previously testified your test results were negative. Correct. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more how you did. Well, let me ask it this way. To perform the test, did you make smaller cuttings from the larger shirt cuttings? Yes, so I took the um, cuttings, opened them, and then cut small portions of the larger cuttings to test for hematrace, and then place those cuttings into a solution, and then that solution is added to each individual card for that individual cutting. So there's a test performed for each item. show you a series of photos if I may I ask if you can identify them um, this is what's been previously marked and the, the marks are on the back it's going to be confusing as defense exhibit 96 do you recognize that I apologize Sorry, do you recognize the, uh, the photograph? Yes. And that's one of the uh, cuttings after you made the, the small cuttings? Can I see the other? I, it's hard to tell which was before and which was after without the other cuttings because there's cuttings for DNA and then I cut along the cuttings for DNA. for the hematrace test. Yeah, I don't have. One 
one or two. One and three. <laughs> You recognize them? Yes. And these are the um, the larger cuttings with the smaller cuttings made after the hematrace test. I know that we took photos before the cutting was taken for hematrace and after. It's hard to tell from these pictures if it was before or after, but they were taken during the hematrace processing of the shirt. Your Honor, at this time, I would offer Defendants Exhibits 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. No objection, Your Honor. They're admitted without objection. Permission to publish. May I publish? You don't need my permission to publish anything that's in evidence. Who would bring up uh, the first one? Go get the uh, the whiteboard. Be sure there's a close view of the TV. So in this one, it looks like you made five cuttings. Is that correct? So some of these cuttings were originally taken for DNA. Um, I tried when I cut for hematrace to also cut along where the cuttings were taken for DNA. Okay. So, so but there's five there, right? Yes. Okay. The next one. And let's see if we can count how many are here. Were you able to count how many? It looks like 14. It's a little hard to see the very small ones. It's hard to tell okay, on the small screen. If you're not sure, don't count. It's so 14. No, no, don't, don't do that. It looks like 14. Okay. Uh, next uh, next exhibit. And here. Eight. Okay. Next one. Seven. Okay. Next.
Nein. Next one. Seven. Seven. Next exhibit. Looks like nine. It's again, it's a little hard to see. Yeah, again, be conservative. Don't count one if you're not sure. The next exhibit. Four. Next one. Nine. Next one. Two. That's it. Those are all of them. So now we'll just add, add these numbers up. Uh, I have a couch in the middle. So we have five plus 14 plus eight plus two plus seven plus nine plus seven plus nine plus four plus nine. So what's the total? 74. 74. And in your test, um, none of these did you detect human blood with hematrips. Is that correct? For all those cuttings for the different items, um, they were all put together into that tube for that item. Um, and for all of those tests, the result was negative. So we're over 74 in detecting human blood here. The result was negative. Moving on, then on August 16th, did you attend a meeting to discuss DNA results or outstanding DNA reports? Yes. Were these results discussed at that meeting? For that meeting, we perform card tests. There needs to be a second analyst um, to review the card test and sign off on the review of the test. So she was present when the test was performed. No, 2021, were you ever informed that SLED was uh, seeking a blood spatter analysis of the shirt? I was told after the shirt had been sent that it was going to be sent for um, blood spatter analysis, but I don't know anything about how that came about or where it was being sent to. That was once I was done with my analysis. When you say when the, after the shirt was sent, what, what do you mean by that? 
or however they did the um, blood spatter analysis. I know that there is documentation that um, the shirt was being taken for that in the narrative, but I don't know how that came about. And at that time, I guess I'm a little confused. Were you aware at that time that it was being sent for blood spatter analysis? Not until it was already sent. And by sent, you mean that somebody had asked for the report to be made or that the shirt had physically been sent somewhere? I don't, I don't know anything about how it, how the blood spatter analysis came to be. I don't know what they required for that analysis. Okay, well, could you just tell me a date the first time you learned that there was going to be a blood spatter analysis? Even a month, if you don't know the exact date. I really don't know because it didn't have anything to do with me or my analysis. When was the first time um, your hematrace test appeared on a report that you issued? The report with the hematrace results was issued on November 10th, 2021. Were the uh, results for the uh, blue raincoat also on that report? Yes, they were. Did you discuss the hematrace test results with uh, anyone working on this case? I don't think that I discussed it with anybody else. I don't think so. I would have discussed it with the person who reviewed the results. Did you discuss the blue raincoat results with anyone investigating the case, any agents on the investigative side? I know for the raincoat, um, I was asked to give an update on when the results or would be issued. Um, once I developed the DNA profiles for those items, um, the DNA profiles were technically reviewed, and then um, I was able to um, make a phone call um, to relay those results, and I was able to speak to Agent Ghent and just give him the um, preliminary results for the items from the raincoat. But you did not discuss the hematrace results that are on the same re same report? According to my notes, I only updated him on the findings from the raincoat. Let's move ahead then to um, March 22nd of 2022. Um, I, you just said that you were aware at some point that a blood spatter report had been requested. Were you aware in, in March that one had been received claiming that there was high velocity uh, impacts blood spatter on the shirt? Were you aware of that report? I didn't really know anything about the report or the results of the report. Um, so you weren't aware of it in March 2022, is that correct? I don't know when. I don't really do not remember when I was told or what. I know that I didn't really get much information about the report or when. Okay. Well, moving then a little further then, um, on April 11, 2022, the Attorney General requested a meeting that occurred on April 20th, you know, nine days later, to discuss uh, reports. Yes. And in preparing for that meeting on the 20th, did you access your November 10 report on April uh, 18 and April 19? couple days before that meeting? I mean, did I look at the report in preparation yes. for the meeting? I, I would have reviewed the reports in preparation for the meeting, yes. At that meeting, uh, was any 
Is there any discussion of blood spatter? I do not remember. Okay, this is the, the first meeting of the AG's office after the report is received saying that there is blood spatter. But discussed? that had nothing to do with my testing, so I don't really know. Did you notice uh, that six days after that meeting, there were media reports that uh, high velocity impact spatter had been found in Mr. Murdoch's? T shirt? I tried very hard to not look at any media reports involving this case at all, so I tried to avoid that information. Well, at, at some point, did someone come to you and ask uh, about the hematrace uh, test results that you performed that say no human blood, 0 for 74, in relation to this report seeing that there was It does appear that that April meeting was the first meeting after that report was issued um, where we had a discussion about the reports. So it would have been that meeting that had been discussed, your hematrace test results and the blood spatter report discussed in the same meeting? Possibly, but I don't know that. I also wasn't present for all of the meetings all of the time. I know there were some times when um, there were meetings with specific individuals first, and then I would come later. So I don't remember if there was specific discussion of blood spatter there when I was present. And then you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 95, do you recognize that? Yes. Um, it is a memorandum to the file for this case. And, and you're the author of this memorandum? Yes. And it concerns hematrace and it relates to this case? Yes. I was asked to um, do some research into the scientific literature um, to see if there was information about hematrace and potential um, effects of other kinds of testing prior to hematrace, as well as um, list some reasons for possible negative um, hematrace results. Uh, you know, I would offer a defendant's exhibit 95 into evidence. So the state. No objection, Your Honor. Submitted without objection. Were you asked to write this uh, memo? Yes. Uh, who asked you to do this? Um, Creighton Waters asked for me to um, do this research and then summarize um, my findings in a, the form of a memo. Did he tell you why he was asking you to do this? Um, because there were negative hematrace results in this case from the shirt. He wanted um, just some more information on negative hematrace results. Was it specifically because of the report saying High velocity impact spatter? I don't know that. Was that discussed when he asked you to do this? We discussed the negative hematrace results on the shirt. Did you discuss a report by a man named Tom Devil? I don't think we specifically discussed the results of that report because I don't know. I'm not a blood spatter expert. I don't know anything about what that report would say or what the findings in that report would mean. I just know that there was a report, and then I was asked to um, give some more information on hematrace. Were you um, aware of a report by Tom Bevel specifically regarding use of hematrace on things that uh, had been previously tested with LCB? I was made aware of a report like that um, after I had already, um, obviously was after my analysis had been complete. Um, I don't remember specifically if it was before or after um, I was asked to uh, write this memo. And you attached some uh, um, articles to this memo, correct? 
Yes, I attached the articles that I found regarding hematrace so that um, all that information will be present in the memo. And this first article from the Australian Journal of Forensic Sciences, am I characterizing it correctly to say that it reports that hematrace tests are generally effective af um, after treatment with LCD? For that article, um, there were many tests performed um, comparing um, testing hematrace after the use of um, several other kinds of tests beforehand. Their results um, were positive following LCV um, for 17 out of 17 tests with a blood dilution of 1 to 10 and for 16 out of 18 tests with a blood dilution of 1 to 100. So it usually works. Hematrace, when you're testing something that had a presumptive test with LCV. It shows that it does, it um, did work the majority of the time that they tested it, but they did obtain two negative results as well. Out of how many total? Out of 17 plus 18. Okay. So it, it didn't work two out of 18 times. Um, of the 35 times they tested it, um, they obtained a Am I reading this chart correctly to, to understand it to mean that hematrace uh, detects blood at dilution levels in which L would not detect blood? Um, a According to this study, um, which was performed by the Michigan State Police, um, they were able to obtain positive hematrace results um, for some samples that were negative um, LCV. So the hematrace test is more sensitive than LCV, at least according to this study, correct? It appears to be. According to this study, um, LCV is not a chemical that I use in the DNA casework department. It is a um, test that's performed by the crime scene unit, so they would be the best people to answer questions about sensitivity of that test. According to this, you would get a positive result even if you couldn't see anything with LCV. According to the previous study, after LCV, 94%, and here we're 0 for 74 is it fair to say that there's no human blood on the t-shirt? Like I said earlier, the test that I performed um, was negative for the presence of human blood. Could we pull up 32 again? This will be very quick. Zoom in on the pocket. 
sorry, I don't have a, an image of the back of it, but I believe this is the name of a fishing boat, and there's a fishing boat on the back of the T-shirt. Were you aware when doing this, this is a fishing T-shirt? No. Um, have you ever gaffed a fish? I don't even know what that word means, no. <laughs> well, let me ask it this way, then. If someone were doing something while wearing this T-shirt that would cause non-human blood to spray onto the shirt, could that be a reason why something would have a misting pattern with LCV and test negative for hematrace, you know, 0 for 74? I can't really answer anything about the misting pattern because that is not my area of expertise, but um, one possibility for um, a negative hematrace test is um, that the blood present on the item is not human blood because um, hematrace is a confirmatory test for the presence of human blood. It also reacts to ferret blood and higher primate blood. Does it really, um, react to fish blood, does it? No. Did you attend an evidence viewing meeting on January 5th of this year? Yes, I did. Was blood spatter discussed at that meeting? I know that we talked about um, the results of the shirt. As far as blood spatter, again, I'm not a blood spatter analyst, so I cannot give any information about blood spatter on an item of clothing or on anything. Specifically, were reports by Tom Bevel, excuse me, Bevel, discussed at that meeting? I really do not recall. It's just, even though it was just this month, well, last month, time's flying. Yeah, it's hard to remember specifics. The reports by uh, a deputy Kinsey discussed regarding blood spatter. I don't recall that name at all. Was the t-shirt discussed? I don't remember the exact items that were um, discussed specifically. Has anyone, I'm going to ask this. It looks like there's been a lot of work done on this t-shirt. Yes. And that's fair, right? Yes. Put a lot of work into this t-shirt. Um, there were the little cuttings in the beginning, with small ones in the hem, right? And then those are uh, tested with uh, pheno... phenolphthalein, right? And then DNA tested. All of these large cuttings we haven't even gone over. There were a couple in the back of the shirt as well. Uh, these small cuttings. Then you went back and made more small cuttings for the hematrace, right? Lots of work. And then you're doing this, this big memo about hematrace because of the shirt, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of work, and this is going on from a period of June 21, the month of the murders, it looks like all the way up until a month before trial. Is that fair? Well, my, my analysis was complete um, before that, but. I mean, you're doing this memo to file because of the shirt results, correct? Um, yes, correct. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, so for all this, all this work on this shirt, um, it appears that the theory was that he was wearing that shirt that night. Same. Just ask uh, maybe this, the meetings that you've attended where the shirt was discussed, blood spatter was perhaps discussed, was there ever any discussion of a blue button down shirt? Not that I recall. Never discussed? Okay. Fed reports and both.
I know you said it's not your area, but are you familiar with the term high velocity impact spatter? Not really. Do you, you even know what that is? No, I'm not a blood spatter expert. Would you think that you could have blood spatter without blood? Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Can you redirect? something do you try to be thorough in your analysis yes I do and are you aware that before you analyze this shirt that there were um, presumptive positives for blood yes okay. and then when you analyze the shirt with the hematrace what were your findings um, the hematrace results were negative all right Um, the defense also asked you about um, touch DNA. When you analyze those cases and shot shells that were found at the scene, what were you analyzing those items for? For item 7.1, um, the request was for um, touch DNA analysis. For items 9 and 10, the request was also for touch DNA analysis, but because um, the, there was staining on the swabs when um, Rachel Wynn did her processing, um, she presumptively tested those swabs and they were presumptively positive for blood and so they were forwarded. For DNA analysis. But for touch DNA on items like that, would you be looking for possibly who ever loaded those items into a gun? <laughs> Whose other DNA could you be looking for when you're analyzing those cases for DNA? Typically, when um, cartridge cases or shotgun shells are submitted for touch DNA, we are looking for DNA of an individual who may have handled those cartridge cases or shotgun shells. And is it common to find touch DNA on fired cases or shot shells? In my experience, um, there has not been a very good yield of DNA on those items. From my understanding, when um, a bullet is fired, it is being put through a lot of intense heat um, as it's moving through the firearm. At least that's how firearms um, analysts seem to explain the process. And so um, the heat can affect the recovery of DNA from that item. And um, also with touch DNA, Do you know when touch DNA gets somewhere? No, I can never say how or when DNA was deposited on an item. So if I shook somebody's hand at some point in the day, could I have their DNA on my hand? It's possible, yes. And you would know when that got there? No. Um, now, do you determine what evidence is analyzed in a case? Do you look at all the evidence and pick and choose what you're going to analyze? Um, no, we are requested to analyze items of evidence. So it's a request for you to analyze evidence. Correct. Who ever requested for you to analyze the clothes of Maggie and Paul Murdoch? I was never requested to analyze those items. And do you analyze items that you've not been requested to analyze? No. Thank you. Very briefly, Your Honor. We're asked about touch DNA. Um, is it common to find touch DNA on an object when that object is discovered 
touching a person? Can you repeat that question? If an object is found actually touching a deceased person, would it be uncommon to find that deceased person's touch DNA on that object? No. And would it be uncommon to find a wife's a touch DNA on a husband's shirt? It would not be uncommon, no. No further questions. Step down. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to the jury room for a break. Please do not discuss the case.